just keep reading him because he does some pretty bizarre things. I, I read the thing once, and then I read it again, and it was still readable. Reed Fleming fights back against people who are even more obnoxious and unknowingly obnoxious than he is. There's a review. He's an inspiration to us all. Reed Fleming is a brawling brute who prefers good whiskey, loose women, and fast delivery trucks. He's the main character in an unusual comic book, The World's Toughest Milkman. Reed Fleming is an unlikely crowd pleaser, but fans of the comic love the idea of a bully employed in so routine a job as a milkman. The dialogue reads like a hard-boiled detective film. Reed's exploits include terrorizing his customers, his colleagues, and even his mom. The world's toughest milkman is the creation of Vancouver cartoonist David Boswell. He's seen Reed Fleming go from a one-shot whim to a minor cartoon cult classic. And David Boswell joins us now from his studio in Vancouver. Hi, David. Hello, Tina. So tell me about Reed Fleming. He's not exactly your uh, everyday hero, is he? Well, he's not supposed to be. Uh, Reed is a human oxymoron. He's the exact opposite of what you might expect a milkman to be. Uh, to him, every customer is a potential straight man. And he, he has a vast repertoire of old and corny gags, like exploding cigars and fake knives in the back and things like that. Um, <laughs> So did you once have a nasty experience with a milkman? I mean, where did this guy come from? Uh, no, I didn't. Um, where he came from, it's, it's kind of hard to say. It's, it's almost a mystical type of thing. Uh, this occurred in 1977. At the time, I was already cartooning for the Georgia Strait in Vancouver. And this sounds hokey, but literally one day I was seized by a force that compelled me to stop what I was doing, which was sweeping the balcony, and, and draw up this uh, first page of Reed Fleming in my sketchbook. And uh, it was totally the opposite of whatever I was doing at that time. Uh, I can't explain it. It's like Reed created himself, and I was just the medium. But, but he's based on a real character that you know, isn't he? No, he's not. Um, the name derives from the kindergarten bully in my uh, kindergarten class. And other characteristics and phrases have attached themselves to Reed over the years from certain acquaintances of mine. Like, I'm not bald? Yeah, that was a, a friend of mine named Daryl in Toronto. I lived in a rooming house there uh, about 15 years ago, and Daryl was a very heavy guy. Uh, I don't mean weight, I mean his personality. He was doing time on weekends for armed robbery when I met him, but he had a great sense of humor, and uh, he was the one who used to say, I'm not bald, I get my hair cut this way. And that's what Reed Fleming says when any, whenever somebody points out that he's got a bit of a pate. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He wasn't your first character, though. You started off with somebody else, I think, called Laszlo, the great Slavic lover. Great Slavic <laughs> lover, yes. Um, as you know, Laszlo's a Hungarian name, and people say he's Slavic just to irritate him. Well, of course. But, uh, that began, that was actually my first published work, and that was, again, in 1977, and uh, it looks like this. Huh. Well, I love your moxie, you know. I mean, you decided you would do this cartoon, and you sent it right off to the New Yorker. I mean, why not start big? Well, this was not what I started with. I got into cartooning because I had heard that the New Yorker was paying $600 for one single panel cartoon. And at that time, my rent was $45 a week. So I thought that if I could sell but one a month, I'd be living like a king. So I quit my job as a darkroom technician, uh, not to be confused with a gigolo and gave myself six months to make it as a cartoonist. And sure enough, within three months, I was a cartoonist uh, for the Georgia Strait. But instead of doing one cartoon a month for $600, I was doing four full pages a month for 20 bucks a pop. Got to start somewhere. Yeah, not exactly what you had in mind, I guess. But still, it, it took off from there, didn't it? You, uh, how did Reed Fleming become so popular? Do you know? Well, Laszlo, Heartbreak was a very dark strip. And uh, as spring turned into summer, I began to uh, resent the long hours necessary to devote to Heartbreak Comics. Um, I had read in my sketchbook and uh, came down to whether I was going to be drawing uh, a milkman in a white uniform with a white milk truck in the bright sunshine, or a would-be gigolo in a black tux lurking in a closet. You know, which would you rather draw? Well, the milkman. <laughs> yes. and. And the other factor, which uh, 
may be relevant was that I had met my future wife around this time and it began to be a little more difficult to devote my attention to unrequited love. Aha, uh -huh. so the life of a gigolo didn't appeal as uh, much. Well, not to my wife. Hmm. So Reed then became, who liked him? Did, did kids like him or grown-ups, milkman perhaps? Well, uh, a lot of people seemed to like him. At the time, I began to get a lot of mail from the lads in the shipping department at a department store here, Woodward's. And uh, that culminated in them drawing a comic strip of Reed Fleming bursting into my office and throwing Laszlo out the window and demanding that I continue his adventures. Uh, I was reluctant at first because it seemed to me that Reed Fleming was a fairly basic character and that everything about him was encapsulated in that one page and that there was no room for development. But I tried and uh, here I am. But, you know, in the comic books I've seen, he's a pretty tough customer, and he gets away with everything. But does he ever get his comeuppance? Uh, see Chapter 5. <laughs> yes, he does. I've just finished um, a five-part series for my publisher, Eclipse Comics, and in the uh, final chapter, he does pay the price of success. So there is a moral lesson in all this. And, and you don't want to tell us here what that price might be. Give us a little scoop. No, I'd rather you bought the book. Okay. I understand this uh, might be coming a movie. Is that true? Um, it's a possibility, yes. I wrote a screenplay for Warner Brothers, and it's an active development there now. And uh, they've considered a number of actors for the part, but until they get the one that's right at the right time, um, you know, it's not going to happen. It could, it could happen this year. They've talked about people like Jim Belushi, uh, Danny DeVito, Dan Aykroyd, John Candy, people like that. Uh-huh. And whom do you want? I'd like Bob Hoskins, myself. Well, he'd be great, wouldn't he? He's got yes. that wonderful kind of uh, tough look yeah, to him. Yeah, he's got intensity, and uh, he can do more with his eyes than most actors can with their body. Thanks for talking to us, David. Pleasure, Tina. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.